Good morning and welcome to the 21st annual exhibit of Hydrogen and Fuel Cell Technologies. Um, please sit down, have a seat, the drinks are on the house. We'll be discussing hydrogen uh, in many uh, ways. Uh, we all know that hydrogen production is easy. It's been around literally since 1800. Um, but there's always the question of how do we store it? And that question itself is store it for what use? Of course, they're very, very storage technologies. Do we pressurize? Do we um, gasify or whatever? Um, and uh, we have a new take on this issue here. We'll be talking to Dr. Cornelius van der Heid, who's head of business development at Hydrogenius, and he'll be talking about cost-efficient hydrogen supply for industry and for fueling stations. Please welcome with me um, Dr. Cornelius van der Heid. Oh, nice to meet you. Morning. Yeah, hello, everybody. Thank you for, for having me here. Uh, my name is Cornelius van der Heid from Hydrogenius Technologies and we are a global pioneer in liquid organic hydrogen carriers, meaning we actually store hydrogen in an oil. Um, but before I go into, into the details, let me uh, let just give you a quick, quick overview of Hydrogenius. We're a spin-off of the University of Erlangen in Northern Bavaria, founded uh, beginning of 2013. We're backed by Anglo Platinum, the largest platinum group metals miner in the world and um, yeah, are working on, on that technology um, in Erlangen since September 2014, really, uh, with, a, with the backing from Anglo. The research at the university on that topic has been going on since 2009, roughly. And what do we do? We basically focus on, on two, let's say, business sectors with the same technology. So we say hydrogen storage is, uh, we, we can use it for energy storage systems. That's not the focus of today. Uh, but from, from our perspective, for us, that's exactly the same technology. And uh, more importantly, and what we'll focus on today is um, hydrogen logistics. So supply of, of industry um, companies and, and hydrogen refueling stations, uh, hopefully uh, quite significantly in the, in the future. You all know compressed hydrogen and cryogenic hydrogen. Those are basically the two only existing um, storage technologies so far. Compressed from 70 for, for bar for on-site storage up to 700 bar in the, in the cars. But as hydrogen behaves very non-ideal under pressure, even with very high pressures, you don't really reach a very high storage density. And those, those, those high pressure tube trailers, they're also quite, quite expensive. Cryogenic hydrogen has a very high storage density, but you also need quite a lot of energy to ac actually liquefy the hydrogen to get it to minus 253 degrees centigrade. And then you have to keep it there, um, which is also not, not trivial. So from our perspective, the, uh, the much talked about hydrogen economy is, is uh, really difficult to realize with those technologies. They surely have their, uh, their applications and will, will always be around from my perspective. But we think that um, what we do with our liquid organic hydrogen carriers is actually easier. And what do we do exactly? We actually chemically bind the hydrogen to a carrier liquid. The carrier liquid, uh, the chemical name is dibenzyl toluene. The brand name is Malotherm, uh, which is, uh, has been used in industry for 30, 40 years as a high temperature heat transfer fluid. So it's well known in industry. It's readily available, being produced in the kilotons per year. It's very cheap and it's thermally stable, which for our processes um, is, is important because what we do is a reversible catalytic hydrogenation process. That means we hydrogenate the liquid to, to have per hydro dibenzyl toluene with a storage density um, when it's fully, fully hydrogenated of 6.23 weight percent um, at ambient conditions. And then when you need the hydrogen again at your, uh, your plant or at the refueling station, you release it by means of catalytic dehydrogenation and you release the, the hydrogen and you can actually reuse the liquid um, five, 500 to 1,000 times. So it's really just a, a carrier um, liquid. And what we actually do is uh, we build the systems that can do that. 
containerized systems for hydrogenation and dehydrogenation. That's a, a dehydrogenation unit that is currently at our um, workshop in Erlangen uh, that has a capacity of three kilograms of hydrogen per hour that it can release. And uh, does that work here? No. Um, what you can see on the left-hand side there, that's actually normal milk tanks, as any farmer has in his, um, on his farm. So that really shows you how, how easily you can store that liquid. And one of those, uh, those, those milk tanks has a capacity of one cubic meter, so 1,000 liters, and can actually store up to 57 kilograms of hydrogen in it. To put it a bit differently, to, to com really compare it to, to compressed, which is the, the dominating technology, what you can see in the back is three bottles of, of hydrogen, 300 bar, um, weighing together roughly 250 kilograms or having a volume of over 150 liters. But they can only store roughly three kilograms of hydrogen. And we store the same amount of hydrogen in those plastic canisters at the bottom, weighing a total of 50 kilograms and only having a volume, total volume of 50 liters. Uh, that's, and you can actually just lift them up and, and put them anywhere at ambient conditions. And what you can see here in, in a small example, you can actually transfer that to a big example where we now come to the logistics part. A standard um, tube trailer, 250 bar, which is the, the, the standard out there, can transport roughly 350 kilograms of hydrogen. That means you actually transport over 99% steel. With our technology, at ambient uh, conditions, you can use a, a diesel tank trailer, which is commonly available and, and cheap, and you can transport up to 1,800 kilograms of hydrogen just on one truck. That obviously reduces the, the, um, the cost of transport, which in the cost to the customer is one of the, the biggest cost blocks in, the, in hydrogen, um, significantly, because you only need one driver, only one time diesel, um, and you can actually also drive around very easily and fill 50% here, um, put 50% there without any, any problems. That is a comparison, as I said, 250 bar, that's the, the majority out there. And there's the, the 500 bar technology that can actually reach up to 1,100 uh, kilograms per, per tube trailer. But as you can imagine, those 500 bar tubes, they're even more expensive than the 250 bar tubes, and they still don't reach the same capacity as we do. So that is just a, a comparison. Liquid hydrogen, of course, that's not, not on here, that can store significantly more uh, hydrogen up to uh, to, to a bit more than three tons per uh, per 40 ton truck, but as shown uh, at the beginning, you need a significant amount of, of electrical energy to liquefy. You need a large liquefaction plant um, in small scale. They they are not really um, as efficient and and don't really make sense in that in that case. So liquid hydrogen will surely also be around, um, but from my perspective, only for very very large scale long distance applications. And now, the big question is, what does it mean to the customer or to the, the um, hydrogen sales company in the end, uh, in terms of, of business plan? So we've done some calculations um, and to, to compare it. And what you can see, does that? Uh, what you can see here at the at the top um, level, the the ish green uh, line, that's our current current cost level. So if we build a full scale plant. Um, being able to process 6.3 tons per day. That's actually a customer case from a customer of ours as a, as a, um, a, a case study calculation. Of course, being a startup, having a new technology, prototyping cost level is not, uh, not what, what we're aiming at at the target. Um, but there you can already see that at a distance of roughly 300 kilometer transport distance, we actually already beat um, compressed hydrogen storage. And that comes from the significantly higher storage capacity um, and that would lower transport cost. And as you can see, in the our target costing, and our target costing is based on uh, discussions with industry and experts and the kind of the, the typical um, cost decrease uh, cycles that you can achieve with new technologies over time and, and scale up. Uh, there you can clearly see that uh, LOHC will have a significant cost advantage when it comes to, uh, to, to supply of, uh, of hydrogen to industrial customers right here. The second part is hydrogen refueling stations. I mean, that is for uh, for all of us here a very big topic, and hopefully we'll we'll, we'll see it uh, really make the breakthrough in the in the future. 
But the supply of hydrogen refueling stations, and I'm not talking about refueling stations today where you have a daily capacity of a few kilograms of hydrogen, but thinking about a hydrogen refueling station that actually has the capacity of a, a normal refueling station of today and can fill two, three, four, five hundred cars a day, they would need significant amount of, um, of hydrogen. And they, of course, the, 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 the question of how can you provide that hydrogen uh, becomes very significant. Um, and from our perspective, it makes most sense to use the infrastructure that's already there, and that's the infrastructure for fossil fuels, just by keeping on to using a, um, an oil that you can transport in the existing infrastructure, that you can store in the, in the on-site diesel, um, uh, diesel tanks that, that any refueling station has, and then you release the hydrogen on-site, on-demand, put it in the high-pressure cascade, uh, and, and then dispense it into the car. So to make that clear, we're not planning on getting that liquid into the car. That's maybe... Uh, and as you can see here as well, on, on different, um, different countries, the USA, California, surely be, besides Japan, um, being the, the most progressive, Germany doing quite a good, good job from my perspective in, in getting hydrogen fueling stations out there. But here as well, you can see that from our perspective, um, our LOHC technology has significant advantages compared to other existing um, technologies, also in terms of how frequently do you actually have to supply such a um, such a refueling station? And that's from our perspective. That's only the beginning. And for for me, um, what what we are aiming at is um, I call it socializing hydrogen. Everybody knows um, or or has seen it with uh, electrical energy used to come from from large scale power plants. Now everybody can have his uh, his PV on the on the roof. And uh, we just heard in the in the previous discussion, you can actually with with the hydrogen technology that's out there, you can actually supply your local refueling station from your your wind park or whatever. And that's what I call socializing hydrogen, uh, not leaving it to uh, large central plants and everything, but having actually having decentral production, transporting it, it if needed, um, and that can very easily be done with our technology. And then you can either go supply industry, mobility applications, or if needed, um, re-electrify it. And all of that, you can freely choose what, what you want to do. Where do we stand with our technology? As I mentioned, we've, uh, we've been founded in, in 2013, so we now have the first uh, systems running at our uh, workshop in Erlangen. There was the, the official inauguration at the end of January this year uh, with the State Minister of, of um, Economics, Frau uh, Ms. Ms. Eigner, the State Minister from Bavaria. And um, that, that system up here is actually being deployed in the next few weeks to Stuttgart, uh, to the Fraunhofer Institute there, and will be connected with a fuel cell to an actually an electric car filling station um, to, uh, to supply peak load um, capacity when all the cars are coming to, to charge at the same time. So that is really the first uh, demonstration. As you can see on the left, we do have a PV on our roof. Uh, we use an electrolyzer uh, from Siemens to produce our own green hydrogen and then hydrogenate it. And we're actually bringing the green hydrogen from Erlangen to Stuttgart um, to, to supply that, that application there. And we've also closed our first uh, really commercial deal with a hydrogen logistics company in, uh, in the United States, uh, a smaller hydrogen logistics company. And um, uh, they will initially um, use our systems for as a, as a demonstration to their customers to get their customers convinced about the technology as well. They are very convinced about the, the, the economical advantages and the, the operational advantages of that technology. Uh, so are we, and we're uh, very much looking forward to working with that partner in the United States. Uh, and those systems will be delivered um, January 2017. A, a large-scale hydrogenation plant uh, with nearly 10 kilograms per hour hydrogen uptake, um, and then a dehydrogenation unit, a release box, uh, as you've seen on uh, previous slides, uh, with a three kilogram per hour release capacity. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, more than welcome to answer them. Thank you. Are there any questions from the audience? Hello. Hello, you touched upon briefly in one of your slides about the energy efficiency of the system. So how much energy do you need per kilo of hydrogen and how much can you release? 
Yeah, so the process, the, the hydrogenation and dehydrogenation process is theoretically neutral. The important word is theoretically. Um, we need 30 to 50 bar input pressure for the, for the hydrogenation. That is actually the pressure that comes out of any modern electrolyzer, so you don't need any additional compression there. And then the hydrogenation itself is an exothermic process. So there, except for a bit of electricity that you need for, for the steering control system, you, you actually have a, uh, an efficiency, a storage efficiency of nearly 100%, so 98%. On the dehydrogenation, you need the same amount of energy in terms of heat that you get as exothermic reaction um, on the on the hydrogenation side. You need to insert at a temperature level of 280 to, to 300 uh, degrees centigrade. That's 27.5 percent of the lower heating value of, um, of of the hydrogen. And so, in a in a balanced uh, view, the important question is: Can you actually utilize the excess heat from the hydrogenation for whatever application? If you um, you, you have, and then you need the same amount on the, uh, on the dehydrogenation. And there, in industrial applications, for example, uh, roughly 90% or even more of the industrial, or industrial processes that need hydrogen actually have excess heat. So there, on the other side, it's a question, can you integrate that, that excess heat uh, to, to process the dehydrogenation? And then you don't lose any, any hydrogen. Are there any other questions? Like that? Ah. Is there any, pro any uh, effort or thoughts in the far term towards taking the exothermic into like diesel trucks or large units so that they can be I mean, made smaller and smaller and eventually occur in a car? You, you mean getting that system into the car, actually? The, uh, the, the dehydrogenation? The dehydrogenation. Okay. Give us 40 years. <laughs> no, it's, um, of course, there have been those those thoughts, but um, if you can, if you have a look at that system, three kilograms an hour. That's uh, 100 kilowatt capacity, if you if you translate it, um, and that's roughly more or less what you need in a car. And as you can see, that's currently in a 20 foot sea container. So, um, technologically, surely it is possible, but just not now. <laughs> Well, there's so many more questions to ask. Um, we'll just have to continue the conversation at the booth of Hydrogenius. Um, yep. It's been a pleasure talking to you. We've been talking to Dr. Cornelius van der Heidt um, from Hydrogenius, and uh, this is a fascinating new take on uh, storage. So we're looking forward to hearing more. Yeah, welcome at booth B76 just down the road if you have any more questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We'll be back in a minute. Thank you for your...